Welcome back. With more and more people ordering in food these days, nothing beats Thai takeout. Unless, of course, you can make Thai food at home. So here to show us how to make delicious and authentic Thai dishes from her new book, Kin, please welcome Chef Nui Regular. Swadika, thank you for having me here today. Chef Nui, usually a lot of us want to get started on Thai dishes because they taste so good. But then we go into the kitchen and we realize that we don't have the key ingredients. So talk to me about the basics. What should one have in the kitchen if we are looking to get started and trying these new recipes in your book? Cooking Thai food at home is not complicated at all. Once you have your hand on the key ingredients, you are well, very much can make more uh, dishes in Thai cooking. So I would recommend to have fish sauce, which often used in um, salad, soup, and any curry, and um, the Thai oyster sauce. So the Thai oyster sauce has less salty and a little bit sweeter with a beautiful umami flavor in any stir fry dishes or any marinated. And um, the Thai shrimp paste, so the shrimp paste, it's uh, often used in curry paste that uh, bring our very um, beautiful, like um, umami flavor of the authentic Thai food. And uh, the last one will be tamarind paste. The tamarind paste, I recommend to have the seedless tamarind paste, a uh, tamarind that uh, press it into a block. So whenever you need to make tamarind paste, you can take it out and boil it with the water and scrape out the pulp. So you're gonna have the tamarind paste to add it into any uh, soup or curry or add into any of um, the, the sour dishes that you like to bring out the sourness of the food. So it is customary for Thai dinners to feature multiple dishes. And that's what we're gonna recreate here today, starting with soup. You've made a coconut soup with chicken. Sounds delicious. Tell us how you mm. made this. So the coconut um, chicken soup is a very simple way to make with the coconut milk. And um, in my recipe, I bring out a um, very beautiful, sweet flavor of the dish itself by using uh, coconut water. You can uh, use the coconut water and then later on, we, uh, when we boil them, you add a little bit more of the coconut milk and add the chicken in there. So the very flavorful herbs in there would be lemon glass, some of the mugwood leaves, and a little bit of um, like a sourness from um, our tamarind paste and a little bit of lamb juice. I understand this recipe also calls for lemongrass, uh, which is a very much a Thai food staple, but I know that some people find it difficult to work with. So what's your technique um, for first timers at least to be working with lemongrass? So lemongrass is um, very, um, look like a small, a uh, tree like this, like very long mm -hmm. with a little bit of a uh, pointy of the leaves here. So I would recommend at the bottom one, you trim them and then after that you will peel them. And the reason to peel because uh, lemon glass has a many layer of uh, the stock in the stock here. So then when you peel the outer out, the dry one can go, okay, you can just um, throw this out and then later on you can cut to the sizes that you like and then you bruise them. So next you've made some steamed chicken dumplings. Can you tell us about this dish? The steamed chicken dumpling, it's um, very influenced from our uh, Chinese that uh, like immigrant from China. It has a beautiful of the white pepper corn, cilantro roots mm. and garlic. So this flavor, it's used it in marinade the chicken before we wrap and steam them. And also the crispy topping of the garlic, it just bring the bright texture and the beautiful aroma to the dumpling itself. You know, what's very interesting and my favorite part is the dipping of the dumpling. And of course, if you are like me, who is not so, you know, aware of Thai culture when it comes to dishes, you would think that there's just one type of soy sauce. But then we learned that there's actually more than one type of soya sauce. So can you walk me through the different types and what their uses are for? For soy sauce, it's a uh, have different type of soy sauce because it often used for different purpose in cooking. So start with thin soy sauce. Thin soy sauce is a little bit uh, thinner and uh, thinner in color and uh, lightly, 
lighter in the sauce. So this one used in uh, some stir fry and in a soup or also add in into some marinated. And the sweet soy sauce has um, a darker color, had a little bit smoky flavor and more sweet. And this one used in um, some stir fry, bring out a very uh, beautiful color and more sweet to the dish and had um, like a beautiful soy flavor. So the last one is a seasoning soy sauce or many people may know as a Mackey sauce. This one has slightly uh, saltier than the thin soy sauce, but uh, not as sweet as sweet soy sauce. So we add this one in our stir fry to give a very beautiful um, like um, soy, fermented soybean uh, flavor in the stir fry. Okay, so up next, we've got your red curry pork, which sounds lovely. Um, but first, I understand that you refer to this dish as birthday curry because it has a special place in your heart. <laughs> Tell us the story behind this dish. Thank you so much for the red curry pork. It brings me back to my home and bring me closer to my mom. Growing up, we don't really celebrate our birthday in, a, in the tradition. So most of the time, um, my mom would say, today is a special day, so what do you like to eat? So I remember when I was young, I probably talked about red curry because in Northern Thailand, we not really eat a lot of red curry because um, most of the, our curry doesn't have coconut milk. We don't access to many of coconut tree up in the north because of the land, the way that uh, coconut tree more grow in the south where the sea is. So growing up, I get to go to get some coconuts and open them and make the coconut milk for my mom and help her make curry paste in the kitchen. We have a very special bonding together. It's a great day for me to spend time with my mom and every step of the cooking together, it just means so much to me. And it become my tradition every year, she will make that for me. Well, we know that if we are talking about Thai dishes, we can't let you go anywhere without talking about your holy basil stir fry. So tell me about what's in this dish. Holy basil stir fry, or known as a pad pao, it's um, the stir fry ground pork with uh, holy basil, which is has a uh, sauce of the stir fry with the uh, oyster sauce, thin soy sauce, and sweet soy sauce. Also topping with the deep fried eggs, the holy basil stir fry cannot be replaced with any other basil in the market because it had a different flavor. So you can find holy basil at Asian markets or any online markets. Chef Nui, thank you so much for sharing these delicious Thai recipes. We can't wait to try them. Thank you so much for having me here today. It was a pleasure. So for everyone, listen up. Chef Nui's cookbook, Kin, it is available now. For more information on these particular recipes you saw here today, head to our website after the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.